uh, put together a couple of quick wins here. The little different thing about his sneak and show deck list is that he does have a couple copies of Omniscience this weekend. It looks like he cut a sneak attack to play one of those. I'm trying to figure out what else he cut. Maybe a land, potentially. His deck Classic like cut a land for an Omniscience. Hey, he loves... <laughs> He loves playing a lot of lands, too, so I'm a little surprised by that, as Chris is just going to play a mountain. And a Sensei's uh, Divining Top. Thompson does have an Ancient Tomb in the hand. This is a Gataxian Probe to take a look at things and clear the way. That basically sums it up right there. It's Legacy. We're one turn in. Sensei's Divining Top. Let's yep. get it started. And it's Daring Bridge, an Imperial Recruiter, a Red Elemental Blast, and then two copies of Ancient Tomb is what Fox has. So for Thompson, he's got to work his way around that ensnaring bridge. That's the big trick, as he will play a Volcanic Island before passing the turn back. Yeah, I mean, even though he, uh, he can't really lose to the combo, if, uh, if ensnaring bridge ever actually hits, he has no outs. And so he just has to run his opponent out of cards the long and hard way. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty hard to do, and certainly time consuming. The one thing here is Jerry does have copies of Omniscience in his deck, and normally times Omniscience is side by side with a card like Burning Wish to be able to maybe use the Petals of Insight Grape Shot kill. We have seen players do that before, but there are no Burning Wishes here. These Omniscience are actually just in there as ways to actually cast Emrakul to take the extra turn and give a little bit of redundancy to go along with show until to have more things to put into play. So I think the hiccup here is that if that bridge does get into play, it's actually going to be pretty hard for Jerry to win. Yeah, I mean, now the good news is that Jerry just has to uh, to keep the creatures off the table. I mean, if he can get like a Grizzlebrand or Emrakul just in play to kind of hold the fort, yep. hold down the fort against the potential 1-1 attackers, then all he really has to do is keep uh, Yaya Ballard, Task Mage, off the table. You know, like uh, there aren't really any other threats in uh, Chris Fox's deck once you have like a Grizzle brand to block with. Considering Bridge is going to be played, Jerry is going to cast a spell pierce here. So we're certainly going to have a fight over this, trust me, as it is imperative that that does not actually resolve. Taking a look at Chris's deck list, curious how many Ensnaring Bridges are hiding in there. There are only two. He was able to find one here. I imagine that Chris had an idea of what Thompson was playing this weekend. Able to keep this hand, knowing that Bridge is very good in this matchup. There you do see the powerful card from, I believe, Stronghold? Yes. Am I right? Yes. A little before my time. Oh, you're good. I expected a fight, but I didn't expect it from the building itself. It's good text. What's your favorite flavor text? Uh, I mean, I, I Come kind on. of, a, I, if I'm being honest. Come on. There is always a greater power. Hold. You've got to be kidding Hold. me. Hold. Stop. Um, Krolls made him. Yeah, it took me a obviously. minute. Stop. Don't judge me. I'm not judging, man. I got it. There's I not much. It. I was thinking for Nickel. I think it was. I, thought, I was thinking Nickel Bowl for some reason. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Not. A, I don't think there's any Planeswalkers with flavor text yet. In time. In time. Is there is a spell pierce on the Astarian Bridge, and Chris is maybe considering his option on what he wants to do about this here. He does have a Pyroblast and a Elemental Blast, but he's just gonna let this resolve. So does not want to have his battle over the bridge as Thompson is gonna untap here, take a draw. You do see a Scalding Tarn added to the hand. He also has a Volcanic Island hanging out over there. Let's see what land he doesn't want to play. And it will be a turn before passing the turn back. Fox will spin the top. You see a Simeon Spirit Guide. A couple of lands here, Wooded Foothills and an Ancient Tomb. One of the things about Imperial Painter, it doesn't really play fetch lands to fix the mana. There are no Brainstorm signing out here. It's simply to fetch away with top to clear it and reset it. Yeah, I mean, that's just good, clean fun right there. What if Foothills will be the draw here? So Chris probably does have some interest in looking at a new three cards. That will come into play. It also does have Imperial Recruiter to be able to tutor for something and shuffle his deck. So Top is actually a pretty nice resource in this deck. Oh, yeah, definitely. Plus, I mean, having a little bit of extra ways to try to find the combo, definitely not, uh, not trivial. And there are Goblin Welder since he's dividing Top combos. Thompson's going to cast a Ponder here. So we're going to take a look at a couple of cards. He, show and tell, a Force of Will, and a Brainstorm. And as Jerry does resolve this, Mr. Chapin, I do have a question for you. Well, show and tell, an too good? Does it need to be banned, or are we OK? Uh, well, I don't know. Too good is kind of a funny funny uh, term. Should it be banned in Legacy? I don't know. I, I guess I lean towards no. Um, if people, I mean, it would be very different. I, I think that if, uh, if there were more legacy GPs, um, things might come to a head faster. Uh, I think it promotes really unhealthy things and puts a lot of constraints in the format. But uh, 
if people continue to show up at legacy tournaments and it's not just utterly dominating, then uh, uh, I think that I'd wait until there's a signal from the uh, legacy community that they're looking for change, you know? Like, the results aren't totally there. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's obviously, you know, quite good. But the results aren't so dominating that it demands a ban. And uh, the legacy community hasn't exactly gotten sick of it to the point where they're, you know, rallying together to try to get it banned. So I think that there's a little bit of a tendency among, uh, among critics to look at what is quite possibly the most abusive or one of the most abusive cards that puts unhealthy constraints in the format and try to find a boogeyman. But I think that the important thing is to just wait till either the legacy community demands change or the tournaments are just getting dominated. Brainstorm here for Thompson. Fox just spent his turn spinning a top, drawing a card, preparing for the next turn here. I wonder if when, you know, sets are being designed in R&D, if they th think about the cards that they print, maybe because of show and tell in mind, just because, you know, don't want to have something like maybe Ember pull slip through or some big splashy effect that if show and tell does resolve, puts it into play, we have to kick it out of legacy. Like, I wonder, I wonder if that ever no, enters no, no, their no, mind. No, 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 I, I, I remember when, uh, um, when I was uh, when I was at WotC, they were talking about with uh, you know what kind of constraints you know it was during the the, the build you know construction of Mirrodin and Darksteel, and um, they were talking about if we should limit how good artifacts there are because of Tinker existing. Okay. And the thought process was no, if Tinker is a problem, we'll just ban it in any format where it's a problem. You know, restrict it, ban it, whatever you got to do in any format because you're not going to let a mistake like Tinker cause you to have to. Now, I think there's something different for a format like Standard. You know, like if, if the two cards exist in the same Standard, sometimes you've got to just not print one of the cards for a couple years uh, to avoid that coming up in Standard. But in a format like Legacy, um, and even Modern or uh, Vintage, you, uh, you, you can't babysit them forever. There's certain cards that are just busted, and sometimes they're going to break in half. Blood Moon being placed in the stack here. Thompson's going to have... Some effects in response. Going to start by sacrificing one Scalding Tarn to make his Brainstorm a rather good one. We had a rare Blood Moon not too long ago. Was that like uh, just, was it a month ago, a month and a half ago? A month or two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of people uh, aware that Blood Moons are real things. Unlike <laughs> non-basic land. <laughs> oh, they're real. See Jerry searching up some basics here. I don't know if we're gonna have a fight over this Blood Moon or not. Jerry has excellent taste in basic lands. You know he does. Those are actually my, f those aren't my favorite islands, but I, I like those unhinged islands a lot. Those are not just my favorite islands. Those are my favorite art in all of Magic. My, yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Yeah, my, my wife actually got a, a giant, you know. One like of the, the lithograph? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because th that, that artwork makes me really happy. I'm a big, big, big fan. Big fan of all of his work, you know? But Basic Land is just some of my favorite stuff. And I, I've, I like all of the, on all of, excuse me, the Unhinged Lands. I just like the, I guess the templating. I'm not sure if that's the exact word I'm looking for, but just the design of the card. So here we have Imperial Recruiter. It's time to go hunting. The question is, what are we hunting for? It goes right by Painter Servant. That would be a... Normally, the, the good target to go get, that looks like what Chris is going to go grab. Now, he doesn't know that Jerry's playing Sneak and Show, but the Ancient Tomb should make it kind of... That should be sending a signal. I have to imagine that's a tip-off. Jerry with two islands and then three non-basic lands in play. They're all mountains right now. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Chris Fox has a lot of things going for him, but the problem is, of course, that the combo will not work. Eventually, Jerry will flip over enough Emrakles to, uh, you know, he'll flip over an Emrakul and, and be back to where he started. And you can see that Thompson is really in no rush right now, just kind of playing lands and saying, go a little bit of ma manipulation with Ponders and Brainstorms, but there's really no rush here, and the reason is because he really can't die. Yeah, I mean, the fact that that, that ensnaring bridge is not on the table means that the same is not true the other way around. It's, uh, it's kind of funny. It's like Thompson's deck just has ensnaring, you know, the, the equivalent of ensnaring bridge in play from the beginning where he just can't lose under normal circumstances. It's going to take some really funky beatdown. Well, speak of funky beatdown, here comes the Imperial Recruiter in for one. Thompson's going to go down to 15. We'll see if Fox has any interest in playing. 
that painter servant, also a Chantra Pyro Master in hand, along with two Red Elemental Blast, excuse me, one Elemental Blast and two Pyro Blast in hand. But Fox will just pass the turn back over to Thompson, draws a copy of Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. It is, it is funny, because if he draws too many of them, I mean, he's only got four. That would be a... Boy, would that be a nice way to go. Yeah, the funny thing is, the, the thing is, though, as long as Jerry keeps a full hand, he can always just discard an Emrakul to hand size yeah. to set it back up. That would really be something. There's five mana. And this is... That's one of the best roads to victory in Chris Fox's deck. Excuse me, four mana. Challenge Pyromaster in the house. Yeah, the, the uh, ancient tomb. Just another mountain these days. And that's going to come into play. So we're going to be chipping away here. Elevator goes up. Deal one. Between this and the Grill Recruiter, some unorthodox beats being laid here by Chris Fox. Thompson will take a draw. It's a city of traitors. He's not doing much. It's worth noting that Chandra's ultimate does allow Chris Fox to set off three Desert Twisters once he has a Painter Servant in play. All of the Red Elemental Blasts and Pyroblasts could be triple forked and just, you know, spray all over the place, blowing up any permanence Jerry might have. Like, for instance, Grizzlebrand or Basic Island. Haven't really seen a game like this in some time. I mean, the Imperial Painter Sneak and Show matchup is very strange because if Imperial Painter knows what it's up against, it just can't go for the things that matter, which are Grindstone and Painter Servant. You well, have to the go nice a different route. The, the Painter Servant is real nice here because he already has Thompson's pseudo Blood Moon locked. Mm -hmm. If he can drop Painter Servant, he can just Red Elemental Blast the islands and leave Thompson relatively defenseless. You know, like now that that Chandra is successfully in play, all he has to do is use the Red Blast in his hand to protect it. Get it up to eight, and then hopefully ultimate it, and then just triple pyroblast land. How <laughs> I many islands in Jerry's deck? Two, probably? Three. Three islands in this Only deck. three islands. Yeah, two in play. And it's tough, because Jerry can't go look for him anymore. All that Thompson's looking for right now is a copy of Sneak Attack. Maybe cutting one is going to come back to hurt him here. <laughs> Looks like it may be time. To discard. Thompson does discard Emrakul uh -huh. the hand size. So now it's time to shuffle everybody back in. I kind of like the just proactive discard Emrakul. Just send Chris Fox a message. And let you know where I'm at. Like, let's just let's just call a spade for a spade. You know what I'm doing. I know what you're doing. Now let's play some magic. Another blast is the draw. We're starting to get to the spot where Chris Fox has so many red blasts in hand, he can't reliably count on Chandra to, uh, to ultimate into, uh, into one. It's kind of fun, the interaction between Sensei's Divining Top and Chandra, though. Not only can he ensure that he always has a card on top that he can cast if he ever wants to use Chandra's zero ability, he can juggle a Pyroblast to make sure Chandra's going to ultimate uh, exactly, you know, exactly what he's looking for. Yeah, that's true. Also got, like, the grindstone plus top. You can clear your own top. Oh, yeah. If, if necessary. Absolutely. Maybe dig for some more action. So, Jerry, not a lot of answers to Chandra, Pyromaster, in his deck. No. His, uh, his main plan here, he would sure love to sneak attack down a creature. And it looks like he did, in fact, draw another Emrakul. Lucky. Classic shuffle your deck and draw the same Emrakul <laughs> again. Not exactly what you want when you're discarding the hand size. I wonder if Jerry's going to fire up this brainstorm right now. I think he knows that it's not going to resolve, so he's kind of holding it to remove the force of will. But at some point, he's going to have to find Sneak Attack. There are, again, only three of them in his deck list this weekend, along with two copies of Omniscience. Now, Sneak Attack, of course, is the end boss at this point. Can't be countered by Chris Fox, and Jerry has the creatures to put it into play with it. Kind of surprised that Fox isn't getting that Painter Servant down ASAP in I order to be able to protect himself against the combo. And here is Brainstorm. It seems like a reluctant one. You're talking about Jerry in general or just this brainstorm? Yes, this brainstorm feels very reluctant. <laughs> it's just that's something I think he's thrilled to be casting because of the potential of getting brainstorm locked. But he did find a copy of Sneak Attack. And so some cards are going to go back on top of the deck here. Gristlebrand and Emrakul look to be the weapons of choice. And again, Chris Fox with the inability to counter a Sneak Attack because there is no Painter Servant on the table. And like you, I'm yeah. a little surprised that he did not take... The opportunity, you see how many lands he has in play, the opportunity to try to resolve that. Yeah, I think he just didn't want to fight over it yet, but it seems like, uh, I think, uh, I think, as Brian DeMars would sh say, this is the showdown. This is a sneak attack. 
and it's placed on the stack. And Chris is going to take a look at his hand. You see the three pyro blasts. There's a red elemental blast and there's a painter servant. But unfortunately for Chris, that painter servant is not in play right now. So he's going to look at all of those, what would be helpful counter spells. And he just has to let that resolve. A sneak attack will be activated. Here is Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, and Gristlebrand. And Patrick, I don't know about you, but I think Jerry's attacking for 22. I don't know. He might just go after Chandra. <laughs> Keep the uh, the board under control. Oh, you, he can send Grizzlebrand at Chandra and Emrakul at Fox. So he, I think could. he, he actually has both, uh, both adversaries covered. Jerry Thompson going to win game number one here via sneak attack. Up a game over Chris Fox in the sneak and show Imperial Painter matchup. We will take a look at sideboards here, and I will look at Chris Fox's, who, again, is in a very difficult matchup. Three copies of Thorn of Amethyst, a Magus of the Moon, a Phyrexian Revoker, two Tormod's Crypt, a Ratchet Bomb, a Red Elemental Blast, an Ensnaring Bridge, a Duplicant, a Manic Vandal, and three copies of Firebolt. Gotta love that Ensnaring Bridge in the sideboard. Brings you up to three in the post-board games. The one duplicant, great against show and tell, of course. Some other options here. I mean, the Blood Moon effects are okay, so we could see Magus of the Moon join the party. Revoker is great against sneak attacks, so I expect to see that. Uh, and I think that's really about it on this side. Yeah. Uh, basically, Fox is toast. <laughs> none, of those, <laughs> none of those are going to actually beat the Emrakul plan, and without having the combo, he's going to be resorted to trying to lock Thompson out with uh, nothing but Blood Moon and uh, and lots and lots of blasts, you know? I mean, Frexian Revoker is totally fine, uh, but he's really, he's going to be all in on the ensnaring bridge to lock out uh, Thompson's ability to actually win and Blood Moon to lock out Thompson's ability to interact. Um, Thompson, on the other hand, has access to four Blood Moons of his own because Blood Moon is not super effective against Sneak and Show. He has three Pyroclasms, two Basaiju, who shelters all, two Pyroblasts, an Echoing True, two Swan Songs, and a Pithing Needle. He's surely going to want the, uh, the Pithing Needle and the Echoing Truth, but he probably will be strongly considering uh, Pyroclasm and Swan Song. Uh, Pyroclasm is a little bit of an oddball, but it does take out things like Goblin Welder, uh, clean up the random miscellaneous 1-1s one and 2-2s two that could be sitting in play trying to win. Um, the uh, Swan Song, very strong against both Blood Moon and, and the uh, Ensnaring Bridge, but also it just helps disrupt the many, many, many different artifacts in this deck. Um, Pithing Needle, another option to fight Sensei's Divining Top, as well as shutting off things like Goblin Welder. In general, though, Thompson is going to want to just stay the course, stay on plan, you know, stay on track. He knows the Fox is going to kind of morph into a prison deck that just tries to lock him out. So he's just going to want to be a little conservative uh, and hedge against that. Um, where Fox's deck is usually a blisteringly fast turn four or five kill deck, Thompson knows that Fox is going to have to spend at least 15 turns of slow, really grimy beats in order to win. Try to do it that game. It was just came up a little bit short. Did yeah, Chris Fox. I, I really think I, I think he either needed to stick the ensnaring bridge if he if he figures we just want to make this go as long as possible and set things up, or he needed to get the painter servant down just to protect himself against the combo. But uh, it's it's tough because he knows that Thompson's sitting on a fistful of force of wills and he doesn't want to start a fight that he's going to lose. Game two will be underway here between Fox and Thompson in just a moment. If you are just joining us, it's round three of nine of our Legacy Open here in Portland. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Chapin, at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Port for your tweets all weekend long. We did watch our standard opening include a little bit earlier this morning. Naya Hexproof, take it down in the hands of Robert Hunsaker, a deck that we have not seen have a lot of success at the Open Series, but due to that red three-peat that has happened over the past couple of weeks, we could see... Naya X Proof actually being pretty good, and it was good for Rob, able to win the standard open here in Portland. Oh, yeah. I mean, talk about a deck that just demolishes red. Yeah. If you're, uh, if people are showing up with red decks in your local metagame, stick an unflinching courage on a Witch Stalker, and it will all come together. Ride that bad boy to victory. That's exactly what Robert was able to do. We'll see who's going to win Legacy. Legacy, of course, incredibly diverse format. We've seen a lot of decks winning. Death and Tax has been very impressive on the Open Series over the past couple of months. And it actually did win the Legacy Open the last time we were here in Portland a couple of years ago. So we'll see if that's what ends up happening. But right now, we turn our attention to Thompson and Fox, Sneak and Show versus Imperial Painter. And just a mountain here for Chris. We'll see what the turn one play is going to be. It looks like another 
It looked like he may have been sensing his divine top, but it's going to be a goblin welder. Yeah, he's sitting on a couple red blasts. He's sitting on the top. He's got another land, and he's got an ensnaring bridge. Oh, it looks like one actual blast and one Yaya Ballard task mage. So Ponder will be cast here by Jerry. He'll take a look at the cards on top of his deck and salt his hand here as well. Does have a sneak attack in there already. There you do see Goblin Welder. I feel like... I feel like I wish this card saw more play. This card was super good back in the day, right? Goblin Welder saw a lot of play. Yeah. It, doesn't, it just doesn't see a ton of play anymore. Uh, it's you're saying, sad. Yeah, in the current legacy format? Yeah, yeah. I know that we... You There's know, a lot more graveyard hate than there used to be. Okay. Now, it, it is funny. The most common graveyard hate, Death Ray Shaman, doesn't actually stop it all the time. I mean, it can interact with artifact creatures, but... Um, the uh, Goblin Welder was always at his best with in formats involving Tinker. I know that, you know, welding was a thing back in the day. I mean, before my time, unfortunately. I would have loved to play a deck like that, but I figured, you know, that card was so powerful then, it just hasn't really been as powerful now. It's kind of a, kind of a frowny face. But I guess maybe Tinker is part of the reason it was so good. Here's the Sensei's Divining Top. After the attack with the 1-1 Goblin from Fox, Thompson does go down to 19. Emrakul added to Thompson's hand. You also see there are two Gristle Brands hanging over there and some manipulation and Brainstorm. There is a Misty Rainforest. I think Sneak Attack might be the, uh, the misnamed card of the day. It's not really a Sneak Attack anymore. Like, pe people know it's coming. Did that card see a lot of playback? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was, it was a really tough time for, you know, for anything besides Academy. Okay. But uh, Sneak Attack <laughs> was actually quite good. One of the popular strategies was to use Sarah Avatar to just kill your opponent in one big hit. Okay. But uh, uh, Tsuyoshi Fujita popularized a mono-red sneak attack deck that used Shining, Sh uh, that used Blazing Shoal, uh, Myojin. Uh, I mean, it just used lots of expensive red creatures to uh, sneak attack down, and then Myojin. I mean, then uh, Blazing Shoal in order to sometimes just twenty people. You know, with like the uh, the twelve drop Dragon Tyrant or whatever his name is. Oh yeah, sure, some big big red doofus. See an attack here for one. Mountain the play here for Fox. Looks like it may be an Imperial Recruiter. Another popular use of Sneak Attack was in conjunction with Weatherseed Tree Folk and uh, Shivan Phoenix. Weatherseed Tree Folk uh, is a creature that, it's a 5 3 trampler that when it dies, goes back to your hand. Yep. So people would Sneak Attack it down, hit for five, and then instead of it dying, it would go back to your hand so that you could do it every turn. Okay, okay. Making it effectively just an unstoppable, trampling, hasty monster. I'm trying to think of what Shivan Phoenix is. 3-4, same ability. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Flying. 3-4 flying. Brainstorm here for Thompson. See a force of will. Looks like a dual land. A double land, excuse me, and an island. Jerry going to put a couple cards back here. I know whether see tree folk. Oh, yeah. Two green, 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 5-3. I think can't trample. Yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah. From Urza's Legacy, a rare. That's just good honest magic back then. Gonna sacrifice this misty rainforest. Time to go searching for a land. I remember I was just hanging out in uh, at CMU in uh, Pennsylvania many years ago. This is before his legacy came out. But uh, Weatherseed Tree Folk had just been spoiled. Okay. And we were doing a, uh, a, a draft with just a bunch of custom cards that I had made. Um, but we mixed in all the spoiled legacy cards. I mean, all the spoiled Urza's legacy cards just to get a chance to play with them some. Weather Seed Tree Folk was busted in half in that format. <laughs> the cards in, uh, in my set did not match up well against Weather Seed Tree Folk. Sneak attack will be cast here. Chris is going to spend his top in response, see if he can find a way out of this situation. But he has an ensnaring bridge in his hand. Unfortunately, it's not in play. Jerry going to sacrifice the Lotus Petal for a red. This is a copy of Emrakul. It's time to attack and a permanent check on Chris's side of the board. It's exactly six. Those are all going to bite the dust here in just a moment, but top will draw a card. The good news is that Fox still has four life. You're not wrong. Which means that if Thompson had nothing else, he could try to rebuild. Emrakul's going to die. Everything's going to get shuffled back in here. And Chris is just going to draw and pass the turn back. We'll see if Jerry does have another threat to put into play in just a moment. I think he might be holding on to a Gristle Brand. Not sure. It is, is, and that's it. Jerry Thompson going to win this match over Chris Fox. Two games to zero. Sneak and show, winning a very favorable matchup here against Imperial Painter. Very favorable is a good way to put it. <laughs>
98 2 <laughs> is another way to put it. Okay, I'll ask you another question. I like the, I like the, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a phrase. I, like, I, I was going to say, Talk. I was going to say plug your brain, but that's not it. Pick your brain is what. Okay, so let's say this is a 98 2 matchup. What is, is there like a, was there in, in the history like a, like a 100 0 or like a matchup that is oh, yeah. like this close or like this?